The story of the resurrection of Lazarus is not necessarily easy to understand and it comes from the gospel according to John which is to start with a bit stranger than the others. In this story we have of course Lazarus, we have Mary and Martha and we understand that they're good friends of Jesus. So one day the sisters Martha and Mary sent a message to Jesus saying, you know, your, your friend or brother is very ill. And Jesus' reaction is, we might say, surprising. It, it gives us the feeling that he's saying, yeah, whatever, whatever. And it's only a couple of days later that he says finally to his disciple, okay, time to go. And the disciple do not give this impression that they want to go. It's quite the opposite. They remind Jesus that the last time they were in Judea, people was people were throwing rocks at Jesus. So no, they don't want to go back. And Jesus said, Well, Lazarus is sleeping. Well, great if he's asleep. Let them sleep. He will get better sooner. And then Jesus has to draw the line between the dots. No, no, Lazarus is dead. Well, if he's dead, there's nothing you can do, Jesus, so don't, don't go. And Jesus has to say, okay, okay, gang, we're going. And you sense through the answer of Thomas, the sense of hopelessness. He said, okay, that's where I want to go, so I guess we're going and we're all going to die, but hey, let's go. <laughs> and... The people and the, the group arrive at Bethany and both sisters react strangely when it comes to Jesus. It's, it's almost a bit passive-aggressive. Said, oh, if you had come earlier, oh, our brother would be alive, but you did not come. So he's dead, I guess. It's it's sense of what's the point to have a friend if your friend, who's son of God, uh, don't show up and don't save us. And through the story, the very strange story and reaction, Jesus is trying to give um, to everyone a little message of, of hope and, and, and reassurance and, and talking about, do you believe in the, the, the resurrection? Oh, yeah, yeah, I believe in the resurrection at the end of time. No, no, like now. But people don't seem to listen. And you know, it's and it's everyone in the story seems to have to struggle to listen to Jesus' encouragement. Like the Judean, they will never listen to us. Lazarus is dead. Cannot be more dead than he is. You know, it's been four days, the, the body has started to decay. And the sense of hopelessness that come from the story uh, we can relate to it oh yeah each time us or someone around us use words like it will never work never why bother why make an effort you know it's already played we try it in the past it did not work so there's no way we can do it now very popular in our churches these days and this sense of hopelessness could also be contagious, in a sense. Sometimes we're surrounded by people who are hopeless. Uh, we're surrounded by bad news. And, and, and sometimes we come to believe that, oh, our world has to be broken and and. and cannot be redeemed it's all it's all dark it's all obscurity and and we're tempted to join the crowd of naysayer who said well if they're all of them say that it's wrong or there's nothing that can be done well i guess i will join them i cannot be right and all those people be wrong that must be the other way around so jesus has to break this cycle and to break this cycle of hopelessness has to do something spectacular so people can 
uh, wake up and, and listen to him. And what he did? He brought back to life Lazarus. And beyond the story of bringing back to life is Fred, is the symbol of Jesus offering hope to the world. And, and hope is a very powerful, irrational, and unyielding emotion. When you have hope, you never give up, usually. You don't give up. It does not mean you succeed, but you try, 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 try again. And when, you're face, when you face challenges, when you face tragedies, well, you have this hope that you will get through it or beyond it. Or, and with this hope that Jesus is offering, we are reminded that we are loved. We are reminded that mercy and justice could be possible even if we don't see it right in front of our eyes right now. It's possible. It can happen. We can strive for this. That's what hope gives us in our days, in our lives, in our world. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, I remain Reverend Stéphane Vermette, the lectionary man, and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.